Hey everybody, this is Henry Steele and today is August 1st, 2022 and this is the first of five videos I'm going to do here in the month of August 2022 about using angles on charts, on price charts for the stock market or commodities market or forex market or whatever. But in this very first video, I want to talk about using two angles together in this first way that I'm about to describe. So I have Twitter incorporated here. This is a daily chart, so I'm using the stock Twitter as the example in this particular video right here. And what we want to do is draw two lines on the chart, two angles. We don't really care necessarily what the actual number of degrees of the angles are. In other words, the slope of the angles. We're just using two lines so we can uh, graphically do some geometry here that we don't actually need to know the actual numbers for per se. So what we're looking for here is a double top or a double bottom. And here in Twitter back in 2014, not too far after its IPO right back here, we have a double bottom right here and then a top that comes right after it. Another top, another top, so forth and so on. But what we can do is take our ray right here and draw a line from here and then a second line from this second bottom to the exact same top just like that. Now if you notice we had a double bottom right here and then we have another double bottom that happens right here. So let me zoom in so it's a little easier to see. We've got the double bottom right here so all we're going to do is drag these lines to here. The first line goes to this first double bottom and the second line here goes to this second double bottom just like this. Now what happens is these lines will converge at some point in the future and we find that they do so right here and the market just happens to make a turn right where these lines are converging. In other words, both time and price seem to be had, they seem to have been represented by drawing the lines from our first double bottom and then placing those lines along our second double bottom here to give us a forecasted point in price and time. Now let's delete these two lines and we're going to go a little further into the future here. And we see this point right here. We have one, two, three, four, five points in time where the market made a progressively slightly higher bottom right here in this big sideways channel area of price right here at the very end of 2014, the beginning of 2015. And we can do the same thing right here. We notice we had this bottoming area for a couple of months here. And then the market moved up pretty strongly, made a top here, and then retraced, and then continued on. If we take our little ray tool and come to the very first bottom and draw up to this top right here, so we have to be somewhere in the future knowing that this is the top, and then draw from this second bottom right here to the exact same top like that. And you notice this is a much uh, closer set of lines on the chart here. So if we, since we know that there's five bottoms here, if we skip this middle one and then go to the last two that are right here, and put our first line up against the first bottom right there and our second line up against the second bottom right here, we find that these guys converge way, way, way out into the future and price is nowhere near, right? price is off because we're way down here there's not really a turn at this point in time and you see how there's really if we zoom in really closely here there's not like a single day necessarily it's a couple of days there's about a day over here here and here so we can say that's the closest point right there but there's not really a reaction right here so my point about showing you this is Number one, there can obviously be failures. Obviously, in every single forecasting method that exists, there's the possibility of a failure happening, and that's important to remember. You need to plan for the possibility of failure whenever you're building your trading plan, of course, regardless of the forecasting methodology that you might use. But you need to realize that you can't just plug this particular method into anything 
right? You have to have the proper pattern, which is a double bottom or a double top, not a one, two, three, four, five point bottom or top like that. So we need to make sure that we're starting from the right place here. The starting point is extremely important for pretty much every forecasting methodology, but with this particular method right here that I'm showing you in this first of these five videos, it's important that you have a double top or a double bottom. So if we look for another one right here, there's a double bottom showing kind of considered a triple bottom maybe, but we've got this guy right here. So how would we apply that? Because remember we have to have a double bottom and then a higher point in price and then an another double bottom afterwards. Go back here remember double bottom higher point in price double bottom afterwards and we had a decent forecast when we come here we see well we have quite possibly a double bottom right there depends on how you're looking at this but i think that would be a good example of a double bottom but then the problem is we don't really have a double bottom afterwards do we there's nothing i mean that you could i guess if you really wanted to stretch it you could say that was a double bottom but it's not nice and clean, so to speak. So this is not a type of forecasting methodology that you're gonna have a lot of successive uh, opportunity to make this forecast. You might have, if you're using a daily chart like here, you might have one time a year, two times a year, maybe. If you're using an hourly chart or a five minute chart, something like that, you might get one possibly two times a day. You might go a day or two where you don't have any setups whatsoever. We have right here, we could look at this one right here. There's a bit of a bottom here and bottom there, and there's a top right there, and then there's kind of a double bottom right there. So let's check this out. Zoom in and see how well this does. We go first bottom to it, this top right here. And then we go from our second bottom to the exact same top. Then we move right here. But you see, this is not gonna work right there simply because our two bottoms are in a line with each other. So what's really gonna happen here is they're just going to converge essentially immediately. So there's no forecast right there because it's happening right there. The convergence of these two lines is happening right there. So let's look for one more opportunity. See if we can find anything that's pretty clean. Here's one, bottom, bottom. Although we could consider this a triple bottom, but we'll look at that double bottom. There's a top here, and then there's a bit of a double bottom right there. So maybe we'll be able to get this to work. There's our first bottom, and there's the second bottom right there. And we get the convergence right here. We do get a change in trend right at that point in time, and the market's sitting right there at that point in time. Now, here's the thing you have to pay attention to. This, these moves over here are small compared to, if we zoom out and look at how big some of these swings are, the ones we measured, well, that's pretty small right there. In fact, this big move that we went up to to get the top right there, that's small, and then this is small. So we're not going to be able to expect a huge move to happen in the market because we're measuring small little movements right there, relatively speaking. So that's going to be it for this video right here. Just basically, you're looking for a double bottom followed by a top and then a double bottom after. You're not always going to get the double bottom. In other words, you might measure a bottom, two bottoms, you get a double bottom, you measure up to a top, and then you don't get a double bottom like you're expecting. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you do, great. You can make your forecast. If you don't, well, then you move on and try again. One thing you might want to keep in mind is the fact that when you have a failure in a forecasting method that's geometric in nature, you tend to fail right around the halfway point. So keep that in mind also. Again, that doesn't happen every single time, but it's a very frequent occurrence. So until next week, this is Henry Steele, and I will talk to you later.